Hi, I'm Pat Barnard, Group Managing Editor for TMCNet. I'm coming to you live from IT Expo West in Los Angeles, and joining me is Joe Staples, Chief Marketing Officer for Interactive Intelligence. Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Pat. So we're going to talk about Interactive Intelligence's new CAS, Communications as a Service Offering. And um, this is relatively new to you guys. You guys introduced this earlier this year. I guess the, the first thing that I'd want to start off asking is, why the decision to take your industry-leading, premises-based, all-in-one, all-software-based co uh, contact center platform and deliver it as a, as a communications-as-a-service offering? You know, I think it really came down to customer requests or customer demand. So right. we've spent 15 years developing a very rich, mature contact center platform. And what we found is that we had customers who wanted to deploy this as a hosted offering instead of a premise-based offering, but still wanted access to all of that functionality. So we had requests from customers. We saw plenty of market activity where people were deploying CAS-based solutions. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it was an opportunity for us to, to take our offering and, and migrating it, migrate it from premise-based to, to the cloud. Right, sure. And of course, a lot of other um, software vendors are taking this approach now. I mean, we all, we're hearing about hosted cloud, SaaS, CAS offerings. I mean, they're exploding out there. And anybody out there who's got a premises-based solution, chances are they're thinking about going this delivery route. There's a lot of advantages to it. I mean, first of all, it's delivered as a managed service. And uh, one of the real attractive things about it, obviously, is the cost. I mean, now all of a sudden, the cost of the service is just a nice, neat line item in your monthly recurring expense budget. And you get to shift off all those sort of unexpected costs, all the different things that can go wrong, onto the, to the service provider, the vendor that's providing it. But there's other advantages as well. So I was wondering if maybe you could speak to some of those other advantages. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different advantages to moving to this model. Yep. Uh, beyond just cost, yep. right? And you know, I think we saw cost be a, a primary driver a little earlier on. Right now, it it potentially could be third or fourth down the list. Okay. And we've provided a hosted contact center probably for for two or three years now. Right. But really, kind of saw that accelerate, and we re we did some rearchitecting to to our offering, and really kind of gave it a, a pretty good push earlier this year, as you mentioned. Right. But I think some of those things, aside from cost, time to deploy, uh, you know, we, we get customers that come and say, I've got a maintenance agreement from uh, my legacy system that's expiring. I need to be up and running in three weeks. Much easier to do with a hosted offering, with a CAS-based offering than a right. premise-based offering. Right. Um, the, the concept, I think one that's interesting is this concept of an upgrade. Uh -huh. You know, in a premise-based environment, it's like people work through the night, they do these cutovers on the weekend, it's all hands on deck. Right. That kind of goes away in a CAS-based offering because we'll just introduce features as, as we make them available. Right. Um, so, you know, I think there's, there's benefits and values there. One other real driving one from a strategic standpoint is companies want to be in the business that they're in not in the IT business. Right. So if they're in the healthcare business or the retail business, they want to focus on that. And, and they're very willing to take the technology and the IT services, push those off and say, do a great job for me. I'll send you a check every month, but I'm going to focus on my business. Right. And I think that's a big driver. Right, sure. And obviously that takes the load off the IT resources, the internal IT resources, right. which can also be pretty expensive as yep. well. Um, what about multi-site environments? There's also a huge advantage with, with regard to these types of offerings when you have a multi-site operation. Isn't that true as well? That is true. And we've seen a number of our customers that deploy this really worldwide. And one of the things that is important for us is where those data centers are located. Right. Just from a selling standpoint, customers want to know that, you know, where's that data center? How, you know, what's the proximity for me? So we've got redundant data centers here in the US, but then by the end of the year, we'll also deploy in Japan, Australia, Germany, and we've already deployed in the UK. Mm -hmm. So we're really getting a, a nice geographic footprint to where a, a large company can come to us and say, you know, I, I want you to provide these CAS services for my contact center worldwide, and we can do that from various locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and then in terms of being able to upgrade, I mean, companies can make a, a nice, neat migration over to this CAS offering as well. Is that not right? They can, and one of the unique advantages that we provide is the fact that we deliver 
our solution, both as a premise-based offering and a CAS offering, they can really go back and forth either direction. So, you know, business models change, people get acquired, companies merge. So over time, somebody that makes a CAS-based decision today may say, three years from now, hey, I want to I want to migrate to a premise-based offering. Right. That's a that's a real easy thing for us to be able to do. Right. Now, when you developed this service, you did some things that are sort of interesting in terms of the architecture of the service. Mm -hmm. Dedicated server for all customers is one thing, I believe. And then also you're using, I believe, an MPLS uh, network um, for control, I believe. Is that right? Or is that for voice? You, you just describe to me how this, how this architecture is a little different from some of the other ones that are out there. So, so one of the things, we, we don't actually use dedicated physical servers for each customer. We use dedicated virtual servers. Okay. And we think there's a huge advantage to that. It keeps the environment isolated but it doesn't require the costs of putting in physical servers, mm -hmm. that those costs typically get passed on to the customer. So we avoid that, right. uh, but in this virtual environment, we're, we're not uh, at, at the, don't have the same kind of security risks that uh, say a multi-tenant environment right. could have. Right. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have a number of different deployment models. One of them does use an MPLS connection between the data center and the customer's premise, okay. but one of the one of the most unique pieces is that we have an offering, uh, again, keeping that MPLS network in place for passing uh, SIP messages and SIP traffic and some voice between those, but we have a, the ability to keep all of the voice traffic and all of the recordings inside the network of the customer, On where the those things network. don't right. get passed back and forth to the data center, which uh -huh. means you know there's, there's lower bandwidth requirements, uh, the security uh, certainly is uh, is enhanced, and the reliability is enhanced. Right, better quality, yep. less latency. Right, right, great. Okay, good. Um, and then, in terms of, um, you know, I mean, you made a good point before with regard to the applications always being new, always being updated. I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, what what other opportunities does this open up for companies in terms of mobility? Um, and in terms of other new features and new functionality that can be brought to them that might be more difficult to integrate and, uh, and develop in-house, for example, uh, with their premises-based systems? So I, you know, I think there's a couple of points there. One is their just quicker access to small features. Instead of having to wait for a significant major upgrade to a premise-based solution, we can int introduce those new features and new functions uh, on a more regular basis, so customers get to take advantage of them uh, quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of the other things is, you know, as they look at managing the systems, a lot of that really is handed off to somebody else. So right. uh, that, that workload goes away for them. They can redeploy those people or focus on other projects. And then finally, so much is moving to the cloud. I mean, it's not just communications. CRM systems, storage, messaging. So the ability to integrate a communication system with those other cloud-based offerings is enhanced if that communication system operates in the cloud. Right, yeah, great, good point. And uh, also just to make the point that this is a full-blown service, in other words, you, you're offering all of the core applications that a contact center would need. There were some that you, I believe you added to sort of round out the offering in June or July, including workforce management and a few others, isn't that right? Good memory, yeah. Uh, so workforce management and and outbound agentless dialing uh, were the right. two most recent additions. But uh -huh. yeah, ACD call recording, uh, all of the messaging functionality, uh, enterprise user functionality for IPPBX. It really is a nice broad product portfolio. Okay, great. And uh, tell me about how this segment of your business has been growing. Um, I do you see a lot of customers, existing customers, shifting over to the CAS model, and how is it generating new business for you guys through ease of uptake through this new uh, service? It, it, it is definitely the fastest growing segment of our business. I mean, really, you know, I, I think you could categorize it as explosive growth. It's really, really? going well. Uh -huh. uh, I think one of the surprises for us is these aren't small companies. These are large, enterprise-wide companies. Uh, companies that are deploying in a CAS model. Right, uh, so, so big uptick. Uh, the other thing is it opens new doors to us. There are companies that go into the process of procuring a, a solution already determined that they're going to deploy a, a CAS or a cloud-based model. We wouldn't have played in those opportunities before. We would have had to walk away. So uh, the fact that we have both premise and CAS 
allows us to come in with a very flexible offering. Great. Good. Okay, well, we've been talking to Joe Staples, Chief Marketing Officer for Interactive Intelligence, about the company's relatively new CAS offering. Thanks very much, Joe, for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pat.